So the episode opens with the head bash. Oh, God, yeah, he was clonked on the head, and he was out for hours. What was he hit with? There was nothing lying around. There was no object. Apparently, there's like an effects storage in a cryo bay because uh, Trust came up with his eyeglasses pretty damn quick. So they were somewhere. Yeah, they have like a, maybe a little personal baggie or something. So maybe she had like a fire extinguisher or a wrench in there. Well, they showed it. It was a tray. You know, the kind that if you actually got bonked in the head with, you'd go, hey, ow. <laughs> but yeah, he was out. And as he's out, my initial thoughts were, and this is before I, you know, I saw further in the episode. I'm like, oh. Are they actually going to show that if you knock somebody out for 20 minutes, they have, at the very least, severe nausea, a concussion. They're going to be dizzy for the next week. They're going to have some serious health problems. Oh, he is bleeding into his brain. Yeah. And, you know, on TV, it's just like if you want somebody to be quiet for 20 minutes, you bonk him in the head. <laughs> I'm like, are they going to go total TV trope? on? In fact, I'm going to have to look that up on TV tropes, the whole head bash thing. because. But anyway, they did that and, and Lane was down and there was a little bit of... And it, it's the wife. And my initial thoughts were trust genuinely confused as to where he is and what's going on. And the wife seems all nefarious and seems like she's pulling the string. Yeah, I immediately said, oh, she's behind all this. She's got nefarious eyebrows. <laughs> yeah, although she does look like somebody who'd be married to a trillionaire and riding herd on him. And that's exactly what she was doing. She played that pretty well, I thought. <laughs> The next scene, Breva got their fuck on. Oh, yeah, Breva happened. Oh, hell yeah. My initial thought was, wait, they were actually able to have like 15 to 20 minutes together without being interrupted by like a lockdown or some giant asteroid <laughs> calamity or something. I didn't believe that. But then they, they get called immediately to the bridge and Eva's talking and Bryce is being all cheeky in front of everybody. <laughs> oh, he was being so smirky on the bridge. He was so satisfied uh, with himself. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> he was in a great mood. <laughs> that's the kind of shit that doesn't get you late again. If I know, because Eva's trying to keep it on the down low. She doesn't want this getting around, but he's all, <laughs> oh, yeah. He was the smuggest of smug. His whole arm was twitching because he just wanted to give high fives so bad. <laughs> <laughs> and then, after Breva is going well, then we get to see that maybe Alicious is not going so well. Oh no, new nerd love triangle. The first nerd love triangle was Angus looking at her and Trent, and now it's Alicia looking at Kelly or Red and, and, and Angus. It's like Friends, where at first it was Ross pining for Rachel, and then Rachel flipped at the same... Yeah, it's like that. They're doing a whole Friends dynamic. It's Ross and Rachel all over again. They just can't seem to get their timing right. She was so upset, she kept forgetting that she wasn't supposed to be using a British accent. Uh, when Angus was leaving with Kelly, and she was looking forlornly on... And she said, cheerio, mate! Yeah. Cheerio. <laughs> Nerd love triangle situation, the interactions going on. That's obviously the stuff that's happening on the surface, but they managed to insert a little bit more of Red once again acting weird. She wants to see if we can find a reason why Arc 15 would have been attacking the other arcs. How do you know it was Arc 15? Angus and I recovered the footage. You did? Yeah, she is so hinky. There's something weird going on with her. She's just suspicious as all hell. And not just because she's a redhead with intrinsically no soul. Again, I will point out that they kind of brushed over the fact that she was never scanned when they found her. Yes. I think she is an infiltrator for Mark 15. I would imagine so. She could make up whatever story she wanted. She took out the last seven guys. She took out the last eight guys because I think she took out her partner, her buddy, too, the guy that they found alive. That could be. How did she beat down a fully grown man like that, though? Because he died of internal injuries. You know how she could have done that? Android! <laughs> Bam! <laughs> Android Watch is back. It's back. Got derailed by clones for a while, but androids are back. <laughs> is Kelly the android now? Gingers have no souls. Androids have no souls. <laughs> They're either two or three years of technological advancement on a planet that's largely on fire, or instead of being two to three years ahead of them, they're 10 years. Ahead. Yeah, could be more than that. Could be quite a bit more. With hypersleep, anybody could be any age, depending on how long they were in a cast. Here's how I'm going to pinpoint it. They could go a little bit extreme with their big revelation, revelatory story deal. Actually, they could. That'd be a good effect. When they eventually unveil Felix's alive daughter, 
I was thinking she was going to be like a nice, hot, pleasant 20 year old, but she, she could be like 60. That'd be also very good storytelling. Oh yeah. He could find out he's like a great grandfather all of a sudden. Yeah. (laughs) And I bet they're going to use that exact moment to finally make it like, like the big revelation. It's been so many years and we didn't know. I bet they're going to use that exact situation. Then let's see, they cut to trust a little bit more explanation Turns out he was shanghai The last thing he remembered was being fired and escorted out by security. And, yeah. and, then he rem- and his wife, like, just prepared for that, like, was able to knock his ass out. And- oh, yeah. Yeah, she is. <laughs> She's nefarious or or is decisive. I don't, I don't know. It's- yeah. Is she nefarious or is she a perfect match for him? I think they actually make a good married couple, really. Yeah, you can see why they did so well because he's kind of like the – aimless, focusless nerd that's okay at doing speeches, and she's like the one who's like cutting throats behind his back. <laughs> oh, and then we also found out that Trust is a poon hound. Oh, yeah, of course he is. <laughs> and the, she mentions it, and we're like, oh, okay, noted. And then Yelena walks, into the, <laughs> yeah. walks into the room, and he like zeroes in on her. They started going like, uh, has anybody seen Lane since he saved all of our lives? Yeah, yeah. It took him like a day and a half to figure out that Lane was still missing. <laughs> I know he was—he was laying on the floor bleeding for a good portion of that time. <laughs> and they're like, "Okay, five commanders, let's all ready, break! Everybody, go and look around." And the, you know, like once or twice they did over the PA system, like Commander Lane, please report in. But they didn't just do over the PA. Has if anyone has seen Commander Lane in the last two hours? Yeah. So they're like. Let's let's go in. All the five of us, we're going to go and look around and look in this room and look in the cafeteria. Just do a fucking PA announcement. It's just the five of them, and they're having to push their way past milling crowds to look for him. I don't quite understand why they went through all those weird... Hey, milling crowd, call off the rave for ten minutes and everybody just look around. You know, they never did check that rave room, which leads <laughs> to my theory that Strickland busted that. Oh, yeah, that rave is gone, man. If you rave on this ship, you will be spaced. Then uh, Doc was doing an autopsy, and we're like, oh, God, we're back to the whole drug story again. My favorite part about the autopsy is she's doing it in the middle of the med bay with the door to the hallway wide open. It's not like it's an autopsy room. There's no drain or anything. You know, the guy died like a day ago. There's, it's going to be a wet, messy thing, right? Anybody could walk by. They were just in the middle of the med bay. That was a problem with Star Trek, too, is they had no concept of, like, HIPAA protocols. They, <laughs> You know, it was like five beds for the entire starship and... Just, yeah, okay. Check me for hernia right here in front of everybody. So that's that's the future, man. That's the future. I guess so. Alicia jabbering at Eva while they were in engineering that produced a glimmer of hope for Bryce's disease. I don't really care about that plot. That's about right up there with the doctor's drug thing for me. The whole Bryce is going to die thing, they're not going to kill him. No, no, there's no way they're killing Bryce. Bryce will find a way out of this. But I can see why Eva doesn't want to get with him because she just lost husband one. She doesn't want to catch feelings for somebody who's going to die shortly. True. At one point, they're doing their search for Lane and and, uh, Strickland and Yelena start kind of narrowing it down because of the, you know, the genius idea he had to trace the transmission. Something he should have done like four or five hours ago. Yeah, that should have been step one. But then they're like, wait, it came from sector OD or something like that. Yeah. Weird. Everything between those corridors has redundant systems. <laughs> yes. It makes so much sense now. They're yes. supposed to be redundancies, but they were all turned into a, a secret room. So there's no redundancies on the ship, <laughs> and it all makes sense. They all got pulled out and replaced. They needed a secret trust cryo chamber in a DNA storage vault. So, of course, there's no redundancies. Always, always. The ARC always comes around and explains it. <laughs> Uh, you'd think an engineer would question why there is a lack of redundancies, but, you know, that's one of the things that I've just chosen not to think about. Why didn't any of the redundant systems kick in? Well, we don't know. They're (laughs) supposed to be there. They're supposed to be working. Maybe we should check these redundant systems to see if they're redundancing properly. They probably figured that that would just be a redundant waste Ah! of time. (laughs) So the doctor shows up in Kat's room. And number one, does she not have any sheets on that bed? It looks like just naked mattress. Maybe that's her thing. I don't know. Maybe she Uh. gets hot. So Dr. Cat, she angles her helpful advice in order to get control of drug disbursement on the ship. Ooh, I didn't even think of that. Was that helpful or nefarious? She does have access now. She has the key. Access and control. 
Hmm, Cat has a lever now. Not only that, she can skim. I said that's weird, but I had no reason why. Much like every time I see her do something mysterious and slightly subterfugical, subterfugical, <laughs> I don't know what's going on with her. I mean, this episode eventually provided a little bit of like relief on that angle. Yes. So Kat conveniently now has drug dispersal. She's got her own agenda and she's building up something. And she puts on this veneer of being like bubbly, ditzy, blonde, but she's actually manipulating. Interesting. I keep looking for Trust Turtleneck peeking out of his flex suit. Yes, yes, yes. I was hunting for that to occur. Yes. <laughs> it, it's weird seeing him not wearing his Steve Jobs turtleneck, but well, then. Then he put on something weirder a Messiah <laughs> robe. Yeah. <laughs> He's dressed like a Jedi, him and his wife. Here's what's going on in the head of all of them. Well,. I guess, you know, the gig's up. We're going to have to somehow, like, work this out. We're going to have to let everybody in the crew adjust to this fact. So we're going to have to, like, walk him down the hallway where everybody's going to see him. Let's let's get him a messiah robe. (laughs) (laughs) It's a flex suit. You probably aren't going to get chilly. Why the why the Jesus robe? That was weird. And yeah, I realize it's hard to do with a two person security crew, but uh, oh, uh, <laughs> but really the crowd control as like this episode and last episode with Kelly, it's really got it's, they really got to work on crowd control. Here. Felix and Yelena escorting the trust, doing a shite job of anticipating crew <laughs> attacks on the trust. <laughs> They're jostling them. They're fuck. Anybody could have shivved the shit out of anybody. Yeah, and then Bryce gets a free shot. <laughs> you know <laughs> and then within like 30 seconds of that happening you got mrs trust being like i trust felix as long as felix is involved yeah that leads to some cool backstory but i'm like demonstrably not the writers of the show just fucked felix in the at or uh, i'm not gonna say that <laughs> wait a minute they fucked his competence over why the fuck in that situation wouldn't him and yelena be like on guard for any kind of physical attacks when she first was talking like she knew him Me and Andrew were discussing how the hell does she know him? What is she talking about? What kind of history do they have? Well, clearly his husband used to be her butler. (laughs) (laughs) He butles. That's how they got together. (laughs) As soon as she started kind of giving some inklings in that direction, I figured, oh, he was personal security, secret service for the trust. That was the obvious answer. I was rooting for butler. (laughs) Uh, I trust any man that is having sex with my butler. (laughs) So Lane gets called to task. Finally, finally, he shows up. Oh, yeah, yeah. Finally, he's there to explain what went on. Garnett's digging into him, eventually leading. The end of the conversation is you are no longer an officer. Turn in your badge and your gun. Oh, my God. Yeah. His easiest defense in the world is I was in fear for his life. There's obviously people don't like him, as evidenced by the man standing directly next to you, Bryce, attacking him when he first saw him. Well, he did try to raise that point. And her point was, you don't tell everybody, you, but you, you tell told me. me and Bryce. Yeah. That was her point eventually, which is an excellent point. I think it's a point for Lane. I think the point is, you saw how right here Bryce reacted. Maybe you'd react the same way, you psycho killer clone who can kung fu the shit out of eight people. You know, <laughs> I think he could have easily talked himself out of that situation, but they obviously were angling for the final scene. Well, that's why they've been setting him up as you know becoming more of an adult and more of a, uh, you know, part of the crew and an integrated person in the last couple episodes, just so he could fall from that height. That was actually kind of shocking that a show that's been doing a lot of really good cliffhangers, the very, very final scene of this episode is Lane out of a job in the hallway, accepting trust's offer on its own. It wasn't really a portentous scene, but the fact that the show put it at the very last thing we saw this episode means that they got some plans in store for that. Yeah, and Lane craves authority. He craves having a job and something to do, and trust is giving him that now that Sharon has blocked him off because she has forgotten the maxim of, you know, keep your enemies closer. Do we want to talk at all about the whole FTL glitch that's kind of one of those things, like I said, in order to enjoy the show, I have to kind of like ignore certain shit. So I kind of ignored that whole sequence. My only thought was, oh, fuck, now they're dealing with actual time travel. I had a much different reaction to that. I thought it was an extremely cool and original way to do a uh, semi-functional uh, FTL drive. 
I loved that, how they kept seeing themselves in the past and the future, and they weren't sure which one was which, like on that Star Trek episode. I thought they filmed it really well. It was unexpected. It was really cool. If I was in that situation and I was trust, I would have reached out and like honked Eva's titty. Be- <laughs> you can't be held accountable. You, you're like, that's just one possible future. You know, <laughs> you, you could get away with a titty honk. <laughs> but yes, I loved how they did it. I thought it was really cool. The end solution to the whole time travel thing that they were in, the FTL faux pas glitch thing. Did you start howling with laughter when they finally pushed the buttons and did what they did? I loved his little backup controls that he revealed under that incredibly cheap looking uh, piece of set. Little lift up keyboard and a big red button. There was literally a big red button to stop things. So he pushed that button when he said three. Eva did whatever the fuck she did. And then what did Alicia do in that scene? Stood around and watched. No, she pulled the lever. Oh, the lever. Oh, the, that the same big, lever she did. The, the lever. It was the death lever. Oh, it's my God. The, the, the release radiation lever. The, the death lever that apparently launches, I guess, his button launched the EMP. So maybe that lever shuts down the. I'm looking around that whole engineering thing, and there's that one big giant honking manual lever. <laughs> it's like one of those old school knife switches, you know, that's like. Could have a big do not touch tag on it, maybe some caution tape around it. Because apparently that lever does all kinds of weird shit. It stops <laughs> the radiation coming from the biohazard tank. Could be like a master power switch or something. I don't know. It, maybe it is. Maybe it's like the big circuit breaker for the entire ship. Which would make sense after an EMP thing, because if you keep power trying to run through it, you're just going to burn out the systems. You're saying there should be a big giant honking lever on every (laughs) starship. (laughs) I just think that they should have had a moment of Alicia getting a little teary-eyed and operating the lever that killed (laughs) Trent. Right? That's true, yeah. She didn't even give it a second thought. Trent is just gone from her head. The very last scene we already talked about, that was Lane and Trust in the hallway. Right before that. Yes, right before that, you see Trust walking through the hallways, and he has acquired... A black turtleneck. (laughs) I was so excited that he had found one somewhere. He wanted to look his best when he went to his uh, rendezvous. Yep, yep. That's why he was dressed up. Because whose room does he go into? Oh, Dr. Cat. Dr. Cat Cat. Medicine Woman. Oh, no. That shocked me. I had not considered. Because we were like, okay, Lane just confessed to Dr. Cat. Because of his whole anxiety over the whole trust secret. And Kat once again had a weird reaction, but it wasn't by any means her first off-kilter reaction. She's been doing off-kilter shit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it didn't really stand out and didn't make me go, aha! And then the wife says that trust has a history, like probably most rich older dudes. Of course, of course. I was taken awe. You know, I was like, oh, shit. Oh, that explains so much. I wonder if he's seen her head or not. (laughs) <laughs> Maybe he likes it that way. Everybody's got a thing. It's better than being a furry. But that did explain a little bit of Kat's previous mysterious actions, but by no means all. Yeah, but that really shocked me when that happened. And, and yet it made so much sense. It does. It does. So many things have fallen into place now. Okay, that's why, and that's why, and that's why. <laughs> mm. This is why I love Ark. They actually think about what they're doing before they do it. You know what I'm actually kind of curious about? We've been covering every single episode, and we've had like a real emotional journey because we started out in full like flame mode. Oh, yeah, man. It has been a long path we have walked with the arc. Yeah. You'd think we'd be like the perfect candidates talking dead with Chris Hardwick. Yes. We could be that for the arc. The arc could have an episode and immediately follow it up with us. The archaeologists. You don't even have to fly us out to Serbia. Yeah, the archaeologists, the the Arco Traficantes. We could be Chris Hardwick without all the weird, funky sex scandal. I've never had a sex scandal. <laughs> None of us have had sex scandals. So, well, well, you, Arc people, if you're watching this video for whatever reason, get us, pay us. We'll get you more <laughs> views. We have our finger on the pulse of sci-fi. I want to know what kind of loofah Eva uses in the shower. <laughs> Not Eva. Whatever her real actress name is, which we'd learn if they hired us. I'll be like, Yelena, that scene where you were scrubbing your chest in the shower, how many takes did that take? And she'll be like 15 and I'll just explode. 
I'm I'm gonna ostensibly say she's probably like a Serbian actress because it's a Serbian production. She has the accent, she has the name, so she's probably Serbian. Uh, they they got to be looking at like American Hollywood stars and sci-fi stars and being like, yeah, I want to be like Jerry Ryan or I want to be like Kate Mulgrew or you know like a sci-fi awesome right, character. Right. So from the outside looking in. That's got to be like weird. I want to talk to him about that. I want to be like, what's it like being Eva? You've always been hot. You're probably a model. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And here you are acting your ass off and like totally owning the show. How awesome is that? You know, I have these questions. She's always been a big fish in her small pond. But now, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now you're on this shitty sci-fi show that's slightly better than Snakes on a Train. No, I'm kidding. It's <laughs> Don't you dump on my arc, man. <laughs> That's how we originally felt about it. But then they won us over. They won us over. Which is a bigger accomplishment than them having started off good. The arc is just like the little engine that could. I know, right? It just don't stop trying, man. <laughs> don't stop believing. <laughs> Do you got any uh, final thoughts that we did not cover on the show? Oh, God. What's going to happen next week? Things are just so in flux. You can't even tell. Lane is back to being evil again. No, 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 no. And there's got to come a moment where he has to battle Gollum style with his evil half and good half. The thing about trust is if he becomes this other polar force pulling against Garnett, who's trying to make like sensible decisions and here's trust being all, ah, I'm a corporate CEO. You know, he, he has not yet come out like that in the least well no but his wife has yes his wife has and she is riding him like a pony she definitely has that vibe all over her she reeks of it trust it doesn't come off in no way nefarious he's like a a smart nerd who got rich and likes hot women so i'm like cool and his wife can easily convince him that he should be in charge of all this and sharon doesn't know what the hell she's doing i think prior to being shanghaied onto the ark she could take half his shit. Therefore, no matter how he, the rich man's dilemma, you know, he married her before he got rich. Now he's rich and getting all this attention by these younger women that look like 10 times hotter than his wife. No matter how much he fucks around, he can't divorce her because she'll take half his shit. But now they're on the ark. What's she going to do? Take his ha half his command codes or whatever. That's the yeah, only right. currency he has. Yeah. So I, th I think eyebrows needs to really watch her step. <laughs> You know, I think trust needs to discuss this with Cat, which is a remarkably convenient thing for him to do. Yeah, <laughs> I had a lot of predictions last video we did last week, but I don't know now. Everything's so all our predictions are wrong, which I love. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. I love being so wrong about things because I'm really, really, really good at predicting things. So I'll watch a show and I see the tropes. I see what they're doing. I've seen it all before. We're able to parse most shows so, you know, like we're able to tear them apart and so nothing's really that exciting. The arc, we're making, like, go back and watch our past videos. We make all these predictions and we're so fucking wrong. We're so wrong. And that's so, so damn refreshing. And it's not Shyamalan wrong where they just pull some bullshit twist out of nowhere. They set this up. Right. We just can't see it. As guilty as they are of pulling various sci-fi things out of their ass just from nowhere and having us, you know, be expected to go along with it. When it comes to story writing and motivations and conclusions of plot lines and things like that and cliffhangers. The writing team, yeah, they're they're doing it. They are so much better than their budget deserves. Ah!